it's not even the headroom for me. It's yeah. it's the mids. The mids on a Marshall 100 watt, I prefer over the 50 watt. It's the mid. I don't know. It's the, it's the EQ stack. It could be identical. I don't know the yeah. technical uh, aspect of it. I, all I know is that I know what I like and I know yeah. what I'm hearing and I hear it from the 100 watt. Mm -hmm. So when I plugged into the 50 watt, I just hit one chord, dude, and it was like, it was magical. And you heard it today. Yeah. And you know what? The amazing thing about today, and that P90 and that guitar and that you know, they'll message me and they go, low action or high action. I go, well. Low action is easy to play, but you'll b get a better tone of your guitar if you have a medium action because the string vibrates more. And better harmonics on medium action than low action. Exactly. Um, but also, and then they're like, hey, what pedal will make me sound better? And I'm like, it's called practice. Can I, ju can I just stop you right there? Yeah. I saw, I think it was on Facebook or Twitter, yeah, the, the whole pedal debate. I'm a gear whore myself, hence the show. And I saw that. And I saw some of the replies. And... It's so true because when I started guitar lessons a couple of years ago, that was the first thing I was like, "Well, how do you like what is what amp are you using? What pedals are you using? It's all in your hands." Because and today is a really good example. And I mean, you can you can get it with a lot of guitar players where it's the hands. Like you sounded like you today, but if you had played through a Fender combo, you would have still sounded like you. And that tone is is in your hands. Yeah, my favorite story is uh, years ago when Van Halen with with Roth were touring and Ted Nugent went out to a show. You know the story, right? Know Everybody story, knows yeah. the story. And Ted's like, hey man, let me play your rig because it sounds so amazing. But he plugged into Eddie's rig and sounded like Nugent. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing. It's in the hands. But the thing is too, is I'm, my philosophy is I, I don't just preach. Mm. Like if I'm, I'm in the studio or at a live show doing sound check and I start doing runs and I go, hmm, it sounds a little sloppy. I'm going to add a little gain. Instead of reaching for the gain knob, I'll go, dude, just, hey, it's all about you guys. <laughs> Get it together. And I'll take another crack at the lick and slow it down a little bit until it's precise and then speed it up to speed. Yeah. And then there I am. I didn't have to turn the gain up. Mm -hmm. And um, I, and it's funny because people will plug into my rig now. Mm -hmm. And they go, where's the gain? I'm like, that's it. Yeah. They're like, and then they press it. I mean, I don't, e I don't even get feedback you know that mm. that whistle when i turn the overdrive pedal on yeah and that's because i noticed that actually when you were playing just what you were doing the vibrato with your hands was bringing out the feedback through the pickups and it sounded spot on yeah so thanks thanks for noticing buddy i sure watch this <laughs> the thing is i mean I, I i watch that when i watch other players too yeah. right because last time i saw mr big a couple of weeks ago at the canyon club yeah, yeah. in um and there's two examples paul gilbert's tone was so damn clean and as you could hear every note. And not only that, he's so amazing, you could park a truck between every note, yeah. right? And then uh, a week before that, or I think it was the same week, a couple of days before I saw Muse. And Muse is my new favorite live band. They were phenomenal. They and his great. tone is phenomenal. Yeah. But it's really gainy and really affecty, and he's Not the other side of the that. tone. Yeah. And you can still hear his, t his when he plays fast, but he doesn't play super fast. Mm -hmm. But when, when you can hear every note, and if you listen to ACDC, that's clean guitars. And when you listen to Van Halen, see, this is my thing. I set, an, I set up an amp, and I want the amp to be ACDC, and I want the overdrive pedal kicking in to be Van Halen. That's what I want. And he doesn't use any distortion pedals, any additional distortion either. He uses all of his amp distortion, too. Exactly. No, no overdrives, no nothing. Like, he uses effects, but and that's... And that's well, a I don't want to talk about what he uses now, because yeah. I'm really disappointed. Why are you disappointed? Because I don't think his, amp, his new amp is very good. The, the Fender version of it? I, I mean, I, I, but this is the thing. Eddie keeps saying he's a tone, tone mark, you know, hunter. But he had it. The best tone ever. Like, when I listen to Unchained, and this is the thing. I'm, I'm, I, it could be different gear. Yeah. Like, I was using the Eagle Robot into a, 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 a Marshall PA cabinet that only has two speakers in it and ports. It's yeah. still a square. And I put the Bad Monkey in. And I'm using that P90 pickup, which Eddie would never use, mm -hmm. into that rig. And I st it stood in one part in my in one place in my studio, and I started playing Unchained just to hear what it would sound like. Yeah. And I'm, I was like, I freaked out because it was the tone. I was like, how did that happen? And now, <clears throat> you know, and it, now Eddie's using these amps, and he's he's using basswood guitars, and he never used basswood back then. It was always Alder. Yep. Basswood doesn't have any bottom end. Mm -hmm. um, and now he's he needs resonance in his amps, and he needs. A, a tone, a low, a low end mod, and you never needed a low end mod back then. I'm sorry, I'm on an Eddie Van Halen rant. But but you know, he's using light picks. He's using <laughs> like the lightest picks you can buy, and it's like, dude, you what? What happened? 
He's he's gone completely opposite when he had the tone. Okay, and all the Eddie Van Halen lovers are hating me right now, but this I can't. But no, but no, you look at I'm the guys. You, I'm an Eddie disciple. Okay? But you notice all the shredders are going back, and they're using the PV6505 and 655 Plus, and not the new Fender 5150s for that exact reason, because they got it right the first time in a lot of people's minds. But you know what rocks? If I plug into a 5150. Two or three, 50, one, 51, 52, yeah. I plug into the clean channel and crank it the fuck up. And, it, and then the thing is, it's so the clarity is so unbelievable that when you go to the dirty channel, it's cloudy. Yeah. And it's like, wow, I'm just going to stay in the clean channel. Yeah. I don't even want to use the dirty channel as my, as my lead tone because it's just cloudy in comparison. And do you prefer pushing clean channels over using an overdrive all, channel? All day long, man. Yeah. All day long. Use the AC30? I love the AC30. And I love the AC30 plugged into a Marshall 412 cabinet. Fuck. It's the raw. With Celestion speakers? Like Celestion 30s? No. Um, my cabinet has 75s in it yeah. because I pick so hard, I make like greenbacks fart. And that's the yeah. truth. Um, but uh, man, it's just the marriage of those two things and the way I play. Another combo that really spoke with my hands. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so down with what my hands are saying and, and everything just making it louder. Yeah. Right? So I'm I'm so into that right now that I'm I'm and it's not it doesn't have to be this and it doesn't have to be that it's just what works. And and do you believe? And I, I think I know when I start first started playing guitar, I went wrong really quickly with trying to copy tones. And I tried to like I'm a big Zach Wild fan, so I went out and, and bought his his Les Paul, and I was like I got to get a Marshall amp and all that stuff. And I tr I wanted to sound like Zach Wild, and you can't. And you kind of hit a point where. I mean, I went from playing an Epiphone Les Paul through a Marshall to playing a PRS or a Gibson Explorer through a Marshall because that sounded like me and that sounded the way I wanted it to sound. Do you think more players kind of should start off with that, like trying to achieve their own tone versus trying to copy someone else's tone and, and not worry about copying tones too much but more with yeah, the playing? I don't, I don't know if it's copying as much. I know a lot of people buy the same. Like, and, and it's funny because people watch the videos of the drills and they're, they're like, or they call me and they go, hey, uh, or not call me, I'm sorry. They'd send me a message on YouTube or Facebook or something like that. Um, I just got an LTD Viper and I put a P94 in it and it doesn't sound anything like your guitar. Mm. Okay, first of all, you don't have my hands. Yeah. Second of all, you got a flame top. Mine doesn't have a flame top. Mm. You got a deluxe. I don't have a deluxe. Yeah. There's so many models over there. Yeah. It's confusing. We have like but if people ask me, I'm about to buy a Viper, what should I get? I'm like, don't get the maple top. Mm. Don't get this. Don't get MGs. Buy a P94, stick it in there. If it's a 301 or a 400, you're set. Yeah. But still, you don't have these. You can get really close, but yeah. you don't have Zach's hands. You don't have Eddie's hands. You have your hands. Or my, my, my pet peeve is when I do a Fred and Americana with an amazing sounding amp like the Tone Master from the 50s with everything on 10 and an ES335 that slays, yep. they go, hey, what pedal will give me that sound? Uh, that's a pet peeve because are you yeah. kidding me? A pedal? And but the <laughs> thing is, I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off. No, 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 the no, thing no. is, the pedal is the only thing they can afford so that they have high hopes. Yeah. So it's true. It it's is, true. right? So I, I take that into consideration. So it's only a pet peeve for about 30 seconds. Yeah. And then once I evaluate what everybody's thinking, I go, okay, you, you don't really know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to go to the Guitar Center and buy a pedal. And it's that's how you start out, right. too. You know? And then, you know, and the other thing about the Tone Master is, like, you go on eBay and find a Tone Master, or somebody says, hey, check this out, I found a link. I go to eBay, it's a Tone Master, and it actually says, made, pro uh, made uh, popular by internet personality Phil X. That's true. And... They're selling for twenty five hundred dollars. I know. I watched a video with you. I, I'm not sure where it was posted, but where you said that, like, how you got popular. Like, when you were sixteen, you played Eruption, and everyone could play Eruption, yeah. and you needed to do something differently yeah. to get noticed. And that's, I think, an approach. It, it helped me personally, where you approach everything the almost backwards than you would normally approach, or you feel comfortable approaching it because it increases your your playing. And I think it, it shows in a lot of your music where it's not like throwing on any kind of cookie cutter record and I think your, your guitar playing really sticks through well, I, I, I grew up like that I, I knew that and I tell young players too you really have to do something that makes you stand out and I constantly challenge myself I'm 45 and I challenge myself okay no 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 I have to stop you there buddy told me that earlier and I, I didn't and do not believe him 
<laughs> I'm sorry, man. He's Five, like, and I still, I walk around the house, and uh, a buddy will come over, and I got my guitar in my hands in my pocket, Marshall, and I'm in my kitchen, and I, I've been working on picking the tapping section of Eruption. Oh, yeah? Just picking every note, right? And he's going, what the hell is that? It sounds familiar, but it sounds crazy. And I'm yeah. like, well, it's me picking every note of the intent instead of tapping the end of, yeah. of Eruption. And he's like, dude, you got to do that on stage. It's crazy. I'm doing it as a challenge to get my hands. I always work on my hands yeah. because it's important to me. And, um, and it's funny because when I play with a pocket marshal, sometimes it's forgiving, sometimes it's unforgiving. Yeah. There's no room for error if you don't have a lot of gain. And I don't use high output pickups. Yeah. But... Man, and then when I plug into an amp, everything's crystal clear and smooth. Yeah. So I constantly work on my hands. Okay, I got to stop and congratulate you. Like, kind of take a step aside. I don't know how the Bon Jovi gig came about, but I can't tell you how happy. I know a lot of people were for you because that's cool. huge, Thanks. man. Like, that's absolutely huge. We're, like, what was that like getting the call? Like, I mean, just like, what do you, what do you say, yeah. right? Oh, really? Wait, what? I, you think you're going to wake up from a dream or something like that. You never think that. You know, and and the thing is, is uh, I didn't audition or anything. I was just recommended and walked in and rehearsed. And, okay, well, see you in New Orleans in front of 50,000 people. And finally, when can we expect the, the prototype guitar, the pickups? Like, is there a timeline? Pickup, um, it's funny because there was a guitar builder that saw me play last night, and he said, I'm ordering three pickups right now. <laughs> so i got to get back to L.A. and talk to our... Rob at Arcane about getting these ready for, they'll be available on my website in another month. I get the first Yamaha prototype Phil X signature. Um, at the end of Did you see the smile I just got? Like, I, I, at the end of September. I'm like waiting, I'm chomping at the bit. At the end of September, it's going to be really cool. There's no, no dots and a, a single X on the 12th really? fret. And my signature in gold on, uh, on that, I wanted gold because of Les Paul, right? Yeah. Uh, on the headstock where the flower pot is. Right on. So I'm really, really excited about it. That's um, awesome. Yeah, it's uh, and I'm really curious to hear what that P90 is going to sound like with all mahogany. I'm really excited. And a fat neck, I imagine. Um, you know what? I left the neck. I love fat necks for when I'm doing rhythms and stuff like that. But yeah. when I shred, I find it a little hard. So it's the same size neck because I found the neck nice, but with larger frets, just a hair larger. Yeah. So because get more grab, you know. So I'm really excited about that, too. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, and I uh, look forward to everything coming out. Really appreciate yeah, it. Thanks, really buddy. Appreciate it. No worries. Oh, man. <laughs> I was pushing you out of the shot. You pushed me the out of the shot. The whole interview. Yeah, you just took over. You just okay. took over. Dude.